This is the uh, mini exam, exam 4A for Physics 101, Fall 2020. What is the angular velocity of the Hauer hand on a clock as it travels from midnight to 3 a.m.? So it's traveling in this direction. It travels an angular displacement of pi over 2, so that's my theta. And then the time that it travels was over 3 hours. So 3 hours is 3,600 seconds times 3. So um, it's going to be omega will be pi over 2 radians divided by 3600 times 3, and that's equal to uh, 1.5 times 10 to the minus 4 radians per second. So see, 45 degrees is the same as, well, if I think about my unit circle, well, this is pi over 2, that's 90 degrees, so this is going to be half of that, or pi over 4. You have a string that will break with a tension of 24 newtons. You swing a mass of 3 kilograms in a horizontal circle of radius 2 meters. What is the maximum angular velocity? What is omega? And look, it's given in radians per second. Look, this FT is equal to my centripetal force, so it's m omega squared r. So I'm, gonna, I'm solving for omega. It's going to be the square root of FT over mr 24 over... 3 times 2, that's the square root of 4, or 2 radians per second for number 3. Particle, oops, sorry. Particle moves in a circular path of radius 0.1 meters with a constant angular speed of 5 revolutions per second. The acceleration then is what? Well, this is looking for the uh, centripetal acceleration. And so centripetal acceleration is equal to omega squared r. I used omega, you know, it could be centripetal acceleration, could be v squared over r. Those are the same expressions, but here I'm given omega, although unfortunately I'm given omega in revolutions per second, so I need to convert that into uh, radians per second. I know that in one revolution there are two pi radians, so that's 10 pi. And look, I see that pi is in my answer, so I'm just going to leave it there. So that's uh, the centripetal acceleration is 10 pi squared times the radius, which is 0.1. So that's 100 pi squared times 0.1, or 10 pi squared. So E is the right answer. When a fan is switched on, it reaches a speed of 240 radians per second. Then you turn it off and it begins slowing. What angular distance does it travel? So I know if I'm looking for angular distance, I'm going to be looking for this. Omega naught t plus 1 half alpha t squared. And my omega naught is going to be this uh, 240. Because that's the time when I turn it off and it begins to slow down. And it's going with an angular acceleration of 30 radians per second squared. But that's negative because it's slowing down, so it's going to be opposite the angular velocity. But I don't know the time, so I need to figure out the time. Look, I can do that. I say omega equals omega naught plus alpha t. Omega is going to be 0 because it, it starts at this 240 and then it slows down and goes to 0. This is going to be my initial minus 30 times t. And I solve that for t and I get 8 seconds. So now I can find my theta. Is going to be omega naught, that's 240 times 8, plus 1 half, a negative 30, times 8 squared. And if I do that, I get 960. That's all in radians. Tornado is 50 meters in radius and carries 200 meters per second winds. What is this angular velocity? So I need a revolutions per second, but I know that V is equal to omega times R. So omega is equal to V divided by R. So it's going to be 200 divided by 5. Excuse me, not 5. 50 meters. And that gives me 4 radians per second. Okay, be careful because it's not revolutions per second. So now I need to convert that to pi radians over uh, uh, 1 revolution. And 4 over 2, that's 2 over pi, um, 2 over 3, which is about... 0.64. So number 6 is 0.64. And then if a wheel is turned at 3 radians per second, the time it takes to complete one revolution is about what? So um, 
it's turning at 3 radians per second, and it goes through 2 pi radians. One revolution is 2 pi radians. So know that theta is equal to omega t when there's no acceleration. And so I have 2 pi equals 3 times t. So t is equal to 2 pi over 3, which is about 2.1 seconds. Notice how I did that, by the way. So uh, I, I cancel my 3s out with the pi. Pi is not exactly equal to to, um, to to 3, but it's darn close. It's 3.1. And then I'm left with this 2. And then I come over here and I look, well, do I have an answer that's really close to 2? And I do. And there aren't any others that are close to 2. So I know that 2 has to be my answer. Just, you know, if you're in standardized tests, you need to be fast on being able to do the math. And you need to be able to do the math in your head, too. So look for little tricks like that to find the right answer. A rigid object is rotating with angular speed that's negative. So have a negative omega. The angular velocity and the angular acceleration are anti-parallel. That just means they're opposite in direction. So I have a positive alpha. The angular speed of the rigid object is what? Well, this tells me that it's clockwise. And because this is opposite, that tells me uh, that it is decreasing or it's slowing. So it should be clockwise and decreasing. So number eight is clockwise and decreasing. Consider a point on a spinning wheel rotating with zero angular acceleration. Which of these statements best describes the linear velocity? So as I have this object traveling around a circle, uh, the linear velocity is a vector that is in this direction. Uh, the linear velocity does not change. That's not true. The magnitude of the linear velocity is constant, but the linear velocity is constantly changing direction. It's not equal to alpha. Those are just different quantities entirely. Uh, is the same as the angular velocity? No. V and omega are different, but it is changing constantly because the direction is changing constantly. An object begins at rest with a constant angular acceleration. After time t, the object has angular velocity omega. What is it after time 2t? Omega is alpha t. That's assuming that omega naught is 0, which it is. And then if I double t, that means I double omega. So d is the right answer. A disk, or a cylinder, has a radius of 4 meters and a mass of 20 kilograms. The disk rolls at a speed of 8 meters per second. What is the total energy of this rolling disk? So I have kinetic energy. It has two parts. It has a linear or translational kinetic energy plus the rotational. I'm gonna, I need to figure out some things before I get dive into this. I'm going to find the moment of inertia. I uh, is equal to 1 half mr squared, or 1 half of 20 times 4 squared, 160. And then I also need to figure out what is omega. Well, I know v is equal to omega r. So omega equals v divided by r. Uh, that's going to be 8 divided by 4, or 2 radians per second. Okay, so now I can come back over here. I have a half of my mass, which is 20, right here, times my speed, which is 8 squared, plus a half of my moment of inertia, which is 160, times omega, which is 2 squared. So that's 10 times 64 is 640, plus 80, uh, 320, that is 960 joules. So A is the right answer for number 11. Figure skater pulls her arms in to decrease her moment of inertia by a factor of two, and she spins twice as fast. What happens to her rotational energy? So what happens here is that she decreases this by a factor of a half, and this goes up by a factor of two. That's her angular momentum, and it does that because her angular momentum is conserved. Now what happens to her rotational energy? That's one half i omega squared. Well, I'm having, let's do a different color so you can see this. I'm having i, and I'm doubling omega. So I get a factor of 4 divided by 2, or it's going to be increased by a factor of 2 for number 12. This object can rotate, rank the moments of inertia from smallest to greatest. So where does it have the smallest moment of inertia? It's going to have the smallest moment of inertia here at D. So I'm going to get rid of that. Um, and then I want to look for 
well, let's see. I, I can I know that A and B are symmetrical, so those two are equal. I can get rid of that. And then the question is C bigger or smaller than A and B? Is C well C has a lot of mass at big radii. Actually, no, 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 I'm sorry. A and B have more mass at big radii, but C has all this mass missing at big radii. So A and B have a bigger moment of inertia. They're bigger than C, which is bigger than D. So B is the right answer. Well, that's a good shape. I like that shape. It makes you think. Merry Round has a moment of inertia of 200 and a radius of 1. A 50 kilogram kid jumps on the edge. What is the moment of inertia? So I have this merry go round and then this kid jumps on the edge. And so the moment of inertia is going to be that of the merry go round, which is 200, plus the particle that jumps on, which is this kid. So that's 200 plus the mass of the kid is 50 times the radius is 1 squared. So it's 250. A is 14. Two discs have the same momentum, but disc A has more energy than disc B. So, how do their speeds compare? Remember, momentum is I omega, and kinetic energy is one-half I omega squared. Because disc A has more energy than disc B, then disc A is going to have a bigger omega than disk B. That way, its kinetic energy will be bigger. So omega A will be bigger than omega B. And it's all key on the squared terms right here because uh, the energy is more sensitive to the angular velocity. So the one with the bigger energy is the one with the bigger uh, angular velocity. Bar has a moment of inertia of 8 and is rotating at 2 revolutions per second in the counterclockwise or the positive direction. Engages with a flywheel rotating in the clockwise direction at 4 and has a moment of inertia at 16. Then they engage and they both move at the same speed. Okay, so this is a conservation of momentum. I'm going to have 8 times 2. That's the momentum of the bar plus uh, 16 times negative 4. That's the momentum for the flywheel or the disk. And then they come together. That's going to be 16 plus 8 times omega. So that's 16 minus 64 equals 24 omega. So omega is uh, negative 48 over 24 or negative 2 or 2 revolutions per second clockwise. One kilogram ball is attached to a spring that is 2 meters long. The ball spins at a constant angular speed of 4 revolutions per second. The strength is lengthened to 4 meters. What is the new angular speed of the ball? So I have a ball on a string and then a ball on a longer string and I know that my moment of inertia is going to be bigger here it's going to increase that means it has to be going slower so it was 4 that means it's either going to be 8 or 16 let's see so here my moment of inertia is 1 kilogram times 2 squared or 4 and here my moment of inertia is 1 kilogram times 4 squared or 16. So my moment of inertia has gone up by a factor of uh, 4. So that means my speed has gone down by a factor of 4. I'm, I'm sorry. I shouldn't have gotten rid of these. I should have gotten rid of these because I know it's going slower. So uh, and it's going to be going slower by a factor of 4. So the answer is going to be C. If I'm uncertain about that, I can just uh, do I omega equals I omega. And I have 4, that's this value, times the original speed, which is 4 revolutions per second, equals 16 times omega. And so omega equals 1 revolution per second. That's 17. Buckets are spinning horizontally, which these statements is true. They start getting rain into the buckets. They gain mass right here. And when they gain mass, their moments of inertia increase. Oh, no, not B. Uh, a, they'll actually slow down because the moment of inertia is increasing. We had a very similar question in, in uh, chapter 6. When will an object continue spinning at the same angular velocity? Mm, that means that alpha equals 0 only when the net torque is 0. None of these others mean that. What is force F required to hold this in place? Well, I have a 20 newton force here at a 2 meter. So one torque is 20 newtons times 2 meters. That has to equal 
F times 4 meters. So that means F is 10 newtons. This figure shows four masses, each with a mass of 2 kilograms in the corners of a square. The square rotates in the plane of the page about point C. What is the moment of inertia? Well, I need to know what this distance is. Uh, it has a, this is a triangle, and so this is the square root of 2 squared plus 2 squared, uh, which is going to be equal to 2.8. So I is the sum of mr squared. This is just treating it like discrete particles. But 2 kilograms times 2.8 meters squared. I'm going to multiply that times 4 because I have 4 of them. And so that's going to be 63. Same one. What is the net torque? So the net torque is uh, fr sine theta. Theta is 90, so that just becomes 1. It's going to be 5 newtons times that uh, 2.8. Is that 14? Yeah, 14 newton meters. Okay, here I give you the moment of inertia. What is the net torque? Well, this one doesn't provide any torque. This one provides a clockwise torque, and this one provides a counterclockwise torque. So I have 25 times 2, that's negative, plus 10 times this distance, which is 1. It's 50. Negative, negative 40 newton meters. That's 40 newton meters clockwise. And then what is the angular acceleration? Well, torque is 40 newton meters, and the moment of inertia is 3. Forty over three, which is uh, what's that? E. And then, oh, and by the way, so here I get to give you the mass. We we can do this. One I is equal to one twelfth m b squared. Although I give you the moment of inertia here, but it's one twelfth of four times the length, which is three meters squared. So if I cancel that with that, and then that cancels with one of those. And so my moment of inertia is 3, as it says in the problem, but you didn't really need to do that. And then here, you know, it's my job to help you do well. It's the job of all of your faculty to help you do well. So please take advantage of us in that way.